Wow, would you look at that? One of my favorite creators just came out with a new model. I'm gonna print it right now. But, but wait a minute, that fine detail, the amount of support I would need, that, that texture, FDM, it, it wouldn't be able to do that. I guess we'll use the resin printer. How hard could it be? familiar with the channel, I really don't do a lot of resin printing. We traditionally stick to filament-based FDM 3D printers, but a couple of weeks ago, Anycubic reached out to me and asked if I wanted to check out their new printer, the Anycubic Photon Mono X2. And it's been a while since I've dabbled in resin, so I said, sure, why not? So they sent me over the machine uh, for disclosure, free of charge. I'm not being paid for this review. Uh, they haven't seen it beforehand. Words and opinions are my own and they are letting me keep the machine after this is done. So we did an unboxing of it, and while doing a live resin printing demonstration isn't the most exciting thing in the world, I have spent the past couple weeks printing with this. Uh, we've done various different models, tried out a few different resins, and I'm kind of back into resin printing. It comes in waves, I find. I'll get really excited about it, I'll do it for a bit, and then I kind of back off and go back to filament printing. And one question I get asked a lot is, should I get into resin printing? If I'm interested in resin printing, what should I know? So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at not only the Anycubic Photon Mono X2, we're gonna take a look in depth at what's really involved when it comes to getting yourself into the hobby that is resin 3D printing. So let's get started. So we'll start off with the specs of the Photon Mono X2 itself. So it has a 200 by 196 by 122 millimeter print volume. It uses a 4K screen and it has dual rails for the Z axis. Now, if you're unfamiliar with resin 3D printing, there's really only one moving part on it and that is the bed. It moves up and down. There is no XY travel. And this could be one of the biggest selling points when it comes to using a resin 3D printer versus a traditional filament based one. Your X and Y travels don't really exist. You're exposing your entire layer at once. So traditionally, if you want to print one object on a filament based machine, say it takes an hour, if you want to print two of them, it's going to take you two hours. With a resin based 3D printer, your print time is really dictated by your total height not by your XY dimensions. So if you want to print one, it's one hour. If you want to print 10, as long as they all fit on the bed and they all have the same max Z height, it's still going to take one hour. So resin has that going for it. Also, when it comes to your XY resolution, you just cannot beat a resin printer. With a traditional filament based machine, your XY minimum dimension is pretty much gonna be dictated by your nozzle size and whatever trickery you can get into with your slicer. So if you're using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, really the smallest XY dimension you could really reliably pull off is something 0.4 millimeters. With a resin machine, because it's using a display to mask off what the layer is exposed, you are working off of your pixel resolution. And this is a 4K screen, and you are looking at an XY resolution of 0.05 millimeters. So that's a lot smaller than a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And when it comes to Z resolution, it's still the same setup as a traditional FDM machine. You most likely have a NEMA 17. This has a lead screw, like a Prusa, for example. But with resin machines, your average layer height is usually around 0.05 millimeters versus your standard of 0.2 millimeters with most profiles for filament based machines. And of course, you can always tweak and tune these values. So those combined allow you to get much higher quality detail out of a resin machine versus a traditional filament based machine. Now, another thing to keep in mind, you're not having to tune flow, you're not having to really adjust parameters to try and tweak and tune, there's no seams to hide. With resin, there are values you do have to change, such as exposure time, uh, lift height, travel speed for the Z, but it's a lot easier to tune in, I find, than with filament. And you're gonna get much higher quality results out of the machine. Really, the cheapest resin printer out there will blow the pants off even your most expensive 3D printer when it comes to that quality of the final print. Now there are downsides to resin printing though, and we are gonna get into those now. So first off, you've bought your printer, you're ready to print. Uh, no, you need to do some more shopping. 
Did you get all your gear in consumables? That's right. We need a kit out like it's a World of Warcraft raid. You're going to need something like a silicone mat to make sure any spills don't damage and dirty any surfaces. This also makes cleanup really easy. You're going to need some spatulas, some to get parts off your print surface. You're also going to need a soft one such as this to squeegee off excess material that's still in your resin vat. Hey, you're going to need gloves. You're going to need a lot of gloves because you're going to get resin all over these and you really don't want to get it on your hand. It stinks. You're going to want a mask too. And no, that COVID mask that's been in your jacket pocket for two years is not proper. You're going to need something that can handle the vapors and organic compounds that resin off gases. So you're going to need a good mask. Spills will happen. Make sure you got paper towels, tons of paper towels uh, to clean up supports. You're probably gonna need some tweezers of some sort, some snips, some clips to clean up. You're also gonna need ISO. You're probably gonna need a ton of ISO because not only are you gonna use this to clean up, you're also gonna use this to clean and wash the prints before curing them. You also remember to buy a wash and cure station, right? Because you are going to need to clean the prints and fully harden them after they come out of the resin printer. So you're going to need a bunch of ISO to fill up the jug. If you are using a two-in-one unit such as this one, make sure you do not have your ISO tub in there and accidentally set it to cure and hit start because the UV lights will cause all the resin that's floating around in the ISO to cure and harden up. This will stick to everything, ruin whatever print you have in there, and it's going to be a mess to clean up. Ask me how I know. You pretty much have to throw out all the ISO, dispose of it properly, of course, and put new stuff in. Now, you of course can use the sun to cure your prints, and there are some water washable resins, but if you're serious about resin printing, you're gonna need a wash and cure station as well. So where are you going to set up your resin setup? Now with a traditional filament fed 3D printer, you can pretty much set them up wherever. Yeah, they make a bit of noise, so you may not want to put one right next to your bed. And some filaments like ABS do kind of stink, but for the most part, you can set them up pretty much wherever. When it comes to a resin 3D printer though, you want to take some more steps and some more safety precautions. So as I said, masks are something you're probably going to want to use anytime you're working on the machine or working with raw resin. but the resin itself, it stinks. And this is coming from somebody who does a ton of ABS printing. So some resins smell more than others, but they are noxious, I find the smell. So you're gonna wanna put your resin machine as far away from living spaces as possible, in my opinion. Uh, if you have something like a fume hood or fume extractor that you can vent the fumes right outside from the room you're working in, that's great. I know not everyone is capable of doing that or has the ability to set something like that up. This resin printer, is the only one I'm using right now. I don't do a ton of resin printing, so I do keep it in my normal 3D printing room here where I do everything. But this room has all the vents blocked and the door itself, I actually have weather stripping around the door. So this room is pretty much sealed up for the most part. Everything that goes on in this room tends to stay in this room. And I make it a point not to be in this room if I'm doing resin printing, unless I absolutely have to. So do all the safety precautions that you need to do to keep yourself and your family safe and always follow manufacturer recommended safety guidelines. Okay, so now finally, you've got everything set up. You got your, your resin station set up, you've got your gloves, you got everything. You're ready to go, you're ready to print. And now you're gonna get into the one thing I kind of dislike most about resin 3D printing, and that is the slicers and the slicing ecosystem. Now, with resin printing, it's not as open source as FDM-based machines. So we don't have our, our Marlin isn't like the standard or Clipper or, or RepRap firmware. A lot of these machines are running the same board, they're running a Chitu board, and that board is not open source. So when it comes to slicers, it's not quite the same. Now with traditional filament-based machines, you got your pick of the litter, you got your Prusa slicer, your Super slicer, your Bamboo Studio, those are all based on the same slicer or slick 3R as somebody like to call it. We have Cura. These are all free, open source, fully featured slicers and pretty much all slicers for filament based machines are, are free for the most part. But when it comes to resin slicers, that is not the same case. So we have Chitu Box here, which is probably one of the most common ones used. There's a free version, there's a pro version. If you want all the features, you're gonna have to pay for it. When you go to download it, it's gonna want you to make an account for it. Uh, Lychee Slicer, there's a free version, there's a pro version. The free version's ad supported. You gotta wait for ads to play before you could slice and you don't have all the features as well. Now, some machines like this Anycubic Photon here, they come with a slicer uh, developed for it, usually by Anycubic. Cubic or the manufacturer um, and it's on the SD card or you can download 
it from their website. So with AnyCubic, we have the Photon Workshop here. I have done a few prints with it. It works okay. It's not as fully featured as some of the other slicers though, um, even their free versions. And I find resin slicers, they, they hit your CPU a little bit harder. So it takes a lot longer to slice something for resin. So the slicing ecosystem, it, it's, it's just not as clean. It's not as easy to get into with resin machines. If you wanna go full in on it, you're probably gonna be paying for your slicer as well. And with most of these machines, you don't have the benefit of using something like Octoprint. Uh, there are ways to hook up some machines to your home network using soldered on components and Wi-Fi add-ons. Most machines though, you're gonna be transferring files using a USB stick and to monitor your print, uh, you're gonna be using your Mark I shoes and walking downstairs to look at the print with your Mark I eyeballs, unless you wanna get fancy with like a baby cam or something. Now, when it comes to slicing your models for resin 3D printing, I'm using Lychee Slicer here as an example, there's a few things that are different than traditional FDM. Uh, there really is no wall settings or infill settings that right off the bat, you're gonna have to hollow out your models and some slicers support internal infill. Um, the reason you really wanna hollow your models out, yes, you can print them solid, but you're gonna be using a ton of resin. Resin is not as cheap as filament and it's more dense. So yes, you get a kilogram of resin and a kilogram of filament, you're not gonna be able to print the same amount of models. So you are definitely gonna to want to hollow out your models. There's all kinds of different settings for how thick they are. And you're gonna to wanna to check cause you don't wanna leave voids. You basically wanna try and have the biggest connected cavity internally. And also don't forget, like a cup underwater flipped upside down. When you take that cup out of the water, you're gonna create a suction there. You're gonna to need to put drainage holes in your model. Now, some models you can download are pre-sliced with supports and drainage all built into it. Some are not. So you're probably gonna to have to go into your models and put in drainage holes in certain spots. And you're gonna to have to hide these because they're gonna be holes in your model. And sometimes you don't always have the best spot to put them. Also, supports, I find most resin slicers nowadays are pretty good with auto-generating supports, but you may need to go in there and tweak and adjust supports to ensure everything is gonna come out proper and not fail. Now, after all that is said and done, hey, we're ready to take our print off. So on a filament-based machine, you wait for your machine to cool down. If you feel like it, you take it out. If you got a brim, you peel it off. If you have supports, you break it off. You're good to go, you're done. There's your print, it looks great. With resin, of course, it's not that simple. So first off, your print is most likely gonna be stuck to your bed. Now, on most resin 3D printers I've seen, including the Photon Mono X2 here, uh, the bed itself is just a piece of metal. There's no real flex plates. Some higher end machines do come removable flex plates and it is an add-on option, but it's not really that common with the lower price machines. So first off, you're gonna have to take your bed off and guess what? That bed is covered in resin. So hopefully you're wearing your gloves, you got your spill mat, take your bed off. You can let it drip and dry for a bit to try and get as much excess as possible, but it's still gonna get everywhere. You hack off your print, now at this point, your print is still covered in resin and it's not fully cured. So you could go ahead and wash your print right now, but all that excess resin that's on your supports, well, that's now gonna contaminate your ISO and get it dirtier quicker. So you're probably gonna wanna break off your supports now. Now, when it comes to breaking off supports, this is one thing that resin has an advantage on. Resin supports come off very easily most of the time compared to filament-based supports. Even Prusa's fancy new organic supports, they don't come off as easy as resin supports, I find. So there are a few tricks. If you need some help, you can heat it up, use hot water, uh, a heat gun to try and get weaken those supports, break them off easier. But anyways, you got your supports off now. Now you actually need to clean your print. Now, some resins are water soluble. You can wash them in a sink, but most of them aren't. And you're gonna have to clean them in an ISO bath. So you're gonna have to wash them in an ISO bath, get off all that excess resin. Remember that ISO also is gonna have a finite lifespan because the more resin you wash it, the more contaminated it gets. Eventually you're gonna have to dispose of it and replace it completely. Once that's done, then you could take your print off, give it a once over, make sure you're not missing any supports that need to be removed or anything that needs to be cleaned up before you put it in for UV curing. And I highly recommend that you ensure that your print is fully dry before you send it in for UV curing. Otherwise, if you have wet spots that will affect the finish on the final product, I use a little fan to help speed things up. And then when you're finally happy, you can go ahead and UV cure it. Now, depending on the size of your print, uh, its geometry, you may have to run it through the UV curing cycle a few times. 
I've even taken prints and just left them outside on a sunny day for a couple hours because they were really thick and I just wanted to make sure everything was cured fully. If you leave uncured resin inside your print, it can damage it in the long term. Now your print's done and now you can handle it with your bare hands because everything before that was not fully cured resin and is unsafe and toxic. <laughs> Simple, eh? Now, whether you want to change materials, change color, or you've just run out, at some point, you're going to have to change the filament or the resin on your printer. Now, on a 3D printer that uses filament, this is quite simple. It can be as simple as on something like the Bamboo Lab machine here. With the AMS, you simply just pull out the old filament, stick in the new, and it handles the swap. Now, on a more traditional machine, such as a Prusa, for example, you might have to heat up your nozzle, pull out the old filament, stick in the new filament, and then run a purge just to make sure the old stuff's run out. It's relatively simple, relatively clean. When it comes to swapping out resin, though, on a resin 3D printer, well, that's a whole nother beast. First, make sure you got your gloves, make sure you got a spill mat. You don't want to get this on the floor. Probably going to want to wear your mask and do this in a well-ventilated environment as well. But make sure you're not exposed to the sun because it's UV and it'll harden if it is. Open up your machine, take the resin vat out, pour the leftover resin, if there's some in there, into your container. Hopefully you have a funnel. Then you need to use a squeegee of some sort, scrape off any excess because after you get as much out as you can back into your bottle, you're gonna have to go in there and clean out the remainder that's hiding under the corners. Make sure you don't damage your FEP sheet in the process. And then once you finally got it all cleaned out, you can reinstall it back in the machine and fill it up with your new resin of choice. Easy peasy. So after all that hassle, all that smell, all that mess, is it worth it? Well. It depends. I'm going to show you some models right here. These were all printed on the Anycubic Photon Mono X2. And I will say these models are, they're resin models. They look amazing. And I think you can kind of tell I'm kind of on an Elden Ring kick right now considering the number of Elden Ring models I've been printing. But the quality that you can pull off with resin is just, you'll, you'll never be able to match it with filament based 3D printers, the texture on the cloth of some of the characters, the fine details. There are parts on some of these models that I've tried printing on a traditional FDM machine and no matter what, they just never come out as clean or they just simply break off the moment you try to remove the supports. There's just not enough robustness to it. And the supports that you can use on resin printing, they just come off so much easier. You're less likely to damage your print. So if you're somebody who's looking to print off models for a local D&D &D group, or you like to paint or do war games, games, or you're into cosplay and you're looking for something that can really do those intricate details that will just pop on your current project. Resin does have a use. However, when you compare it to FDM, FDM is a lot friendlier to get into. It's a lot safer to get into. It's a lot less hassle involved. More people will get more out of traditional filament based 3D printing than resin, but those that can use resin and justify it will get a lot more out of it than filament based machines. So it depends on your personal use case and what you're looking to get. I will say this machine here has been great. I have had a couple of issues. Um, one, the enclosure itself. Most resin machines use this style enclosure where the entire uh, UV shield comes off the top. I really don't like that setup because it prevents you from putting stuff above the machine. I'd rather a door. It is what it is though. Also, this enclosure is actually kind of warped. So every time I put it on and off, I'm scratching up the sides on the bed holding knobs. And while I did use Lychee Slicer uh, for printing most of these models, after a while, it started giving me corrupt files that the Photon X2 couldn't read. I'm not sure if that was Lychee Slicer's issue or the uh, Anycubic's issue for not being able to read the files. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'm gonna have to dig into it more. So I switched over to the slicer that came with this machine. Um, and while it's not as good in my opinion, it worked just fine for some of the models. Slicers with resin 3D printing, as I touched on earlier, are kind of a pain in the butt. It is what it is. So I wanna give a shout out to Anycubic for sending me this printer for testing and evaluation. If you wanna know more about it or to purchase one, links in the description below. Also down there, you'll find the comment session. I wanna know, do you think resin printing is something anyone who gets involved in 3D printing with should at least try out? Or do you think it's more of a niche thing? Let me know what you think. Also, if you wanna help support the channel, the content I create, the things I do, links in the description as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, take care. Cheers.